heaven is our end, right? Our telos is union with God. That's our end. But our end is paradoxically endless creativity, endless communion with God. So yeah. Yeah. our it is very our beginning. Uh, yeah. Our end is our <laughs> beginning, right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's eternal life, right? That is eternal life, the beginning of eternal life, which it's hard to, uh, you know, we're getting into some some interesting territory here, but go ahead. Ed, go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think I have, I don't have much more. I always, what was I going to say? Well, basically, yeah, I just think that like the, I would just conclude my, my thing with saying that Lacan, um, the, the point he gets at is it, despite all of the specifics, which I'm not saying we should just ignore, but fundamentally he's saying a very Christian, he has a very Christian idea here, which is that what we're going to call idolatrous, des idolatrous desire or the passions, they cannot be satisfied because ultimately they point to, um, what what Lacan calls the void, I think is something like it's a very common like evangelical term, a God-shaped hole in your heart. I mean, there is the shape of that hole, I think, is object A, because it is this this um th this uh object that we that essentially uh we our desire revolves around and that what is what we're revolving around is God just unknowingly. And this is I'm going to cut myself off here because I'm starting to uh, talk about stuff I'm not really familiar with. But uh, yeah, you you go yeah. ahead. So, you know, you can think of a Jewish sense of heavenly Jewish sense where Jewish sense is our this investing our desire constantly in the symbolic order, which has captured it. Right. All right. There's a higher level of Jewish sense, right, where you, you short circuit the object, a mechanism of capturing one's ego is captivating the ego. And in doing so, you're able to realize the fundamental desire that is at the heart of, of human beings, right? Because from the beginning, Adam and Eve were not created immortal. Their dispensation was eventually to be immortal, to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. But there was a process that was um, that was being mediated and being followed, which was short-circuited by the fall. So the fundamental desire at the core of our hearts, of our subjectivity that finds itself in this void is a communion, is a... Is a um, is a relationship with ultimate reality, with the infinite, with God, because we're ultimately infinite beings, right? Trapped in a finite fallen world. So that impulse for infinity, the imp impulse to chase infinity. So we're human beings chasing infinities, whether it's an orgasm or a drug or uh, a love affair, but whatever it may be, these are lower resolution slices of a higher resolution reality of being able mm -hmm. to satisfy one's desire, not that desire will go away, but that desire will be oriented appropriately filtered through Christ, mm -hmm. right? And then it becomes mm -hmm. whole. And then from there, the, from there, the, who knows what it, it could lead to, right? The flourishing of the creative impulse in a way that builds wholeness and community and society and, and the kingdom, you know, heaven, uh, heaven on earth, right? Who knows once we get to this base level of relating to each other as persons, right? At the most intimate level, and it fractally goes out to the the largest level that that is essentially what the, what the kingdom is right but it, it it all boils down to fixing or or um or releasing or you know it it comes down to um resurrection right it, it comes down to entering the kingdom of heaven and entering eternal life but these words someone say oh you live eternity that sounds uh, terrible you know what do you do in eternity what you die and you go to mm -hmm. this place and you see your in-laws that that were passed and whatnot we cannot use our human conception and understanding. We have to have humility in trying to think of things or talk about things of what the kingdom of heaven is like, what ultimate reality after uh, salvation is like. I, th I don't think that's for us to to really know, but uh, that ultimately comes down to there is a solution to the perennial problem of the void at the heart of subjectivity. That solution, once it's spoken to from my ability to speak, it becomes uh a, a, a stumbling block on people. So it's almost, we might not even speak it, right? So you have to experience this. It's, it's not a propositional thing where someone can talk you into X, Y, and Z. It's an experiential thing that can be achieved through a very practical praxis, right? Um, it, it, that is available to everyone and is ultimately human beings dispensation ultimately, right? But how do you get, should you be trying to get people to look uh, I feel the impulse to do that. I don't know if it's for some self gratification to think I'm right or whatever it may be, but I see this suffering and the anxiety and the alienation that I have within me and with and I see it in everybody else. And there does seem to be a solution that that uh, is available, uh, even though we can't articulate it. 
and it comes in the right. form of Christianity, which has been completely soiled in terms of its ability to make sense of the world. So yeah, it's a, we're at an impasse there, I think. Right. Yeah.